know, Chris, I love a story. Take me through some of your wine experiences. I bet you've got many to share. Wow, absolutely. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very lucky uh, to have had an amazing 40 years in, in, in wine. Wine brings out the best in people. And, uh, yeah, I've got some amazing memories, including, I remember, uh, we were, I was, had, I was invited by our champagne producer at the time to dine at Le Creere, which is a famous three-star Michelin restaurant in Reims. And I was, uh, I was very, very young and uh, inexperienced. We had the most amazing dinner, and I thought it would be appropriate to invite my uh, host to, uh, to a little brandy. So the, the trolley came round, and uh, I, I, I remember saying to uh, this guy, I'd like to drink something very special with, uh, with this guy, I'm trying to impress him a bit, you know, a young guy from Manchester. So he, with great ceremony, he poured us a glass each of 1918 vintage Armagnac brandy. Can you imagine? 1918. That wow. is, wow, well, you know, First World War, all that. Fortunately, the, the cost at the time was 990 francs. I had a thousand francs to my name and just about covered it. But uh, that was a moment. Um, was it worth it? Oh, it was unbelievable. Was it I can still, you know, and people that know wine more than I will say, certain wines live in your memory. You know, Chateau Ikem, if you've ever tasted the greatest dessert wine in the world, that wine stays with you. Chateau Petrus, the I've wines. You, I? We have. Uh, some of our Burgundy wines, great Gevray Chambatin, Burgundy, that Pinot Noir, it gets inside your head. Um, other stories, uh, lunch with Susanna Balbo, who is the most important uh, wine grower in Argentina. We went up there to her winery, Dominio del Plata. We had an amazing tasting and uh, I managed to convince her to make a special wine for Charles Mitchell, which was, that, that was a moment. Uh, tastings all over the world, uh, New Zealand, you know, I went, I, I went to watch the British Lions, I had three weeks with uh, my wife Tracy, and uh, I toured every single wine region in New Zealand and um, spent time with um, Louis Vavasseur, who, as you know, yeah, yeah. He, he supplies us with amazing wines uh, from, from the Marlborough region. And then we went down to Central Otago and met the lovely Hayden Johnson, uh, from whom we have his uh, Pinot Noir and Pinot Gris en route. Any minute now, we should taste that. It's amazing. So my life has just been a journey of, I've had the most important, uh, amazing time, tasting wine. And always with wine comes great food, great personalities, of people. I and, suppose uh, it must be quite difficult to select your kind of favourite wine, but are the two wines that you can think of that spring to mind that you go, wow, these these are incredible wines, or not? Yeah, I, I think so. So for me, uh, I love great uh, great white Burgundy wines. So for me, Corton Charlemagne, which is the, the Grand Cru of Bone, only made in tiny quantities. Uh, our grower, Vallo, Adrienne Vallo, he makes two barrels a year, about 600 bottles. And I'm telling you, the wine is just ridiculous. It has so many layers of fruit and concentration. It's just, it's, it, it's amazing. And then in red, I'd, I'd go back to um, our friends at Valduero. Yeah. Yeah, their Gran Reserva wine, for me, is their top wine. Uh, the, the 2010, four years in barrel, six years in bottle, that just amazing wine. But uh, And then again, memories with customers, you know, it's all about the relationships, the lovely people I've met, you know, we, we have customers that have been on board for 40 years. Do you think you hand select them or they just appear? I don't know, there's a chemistry, we can recognise a Charles Mitchell customize? client there, you know, there's a bon viveur about them. They want that they enjoy the journey 
we take them, whether it's whether it's at our dinners or coming on wine trips, they have a hunger and a thirst for new wines. And I suppose it's like a not a community, but it's just something that you've. Um, it's organically grown, hasn't it? Because I've been on your trips, and they've been amazing. You know, mm. and your customers are amazing as well. Yeah. You know, you're saying about the six annos. I remember when we were in. Um, Spain, and they were talking about the blind testing. Yes. Tell me about that. With Michelle Obama, did she? Uh, yeah, look, look, the same winery. Uh, so the blind tasting is the Yolanda and Carolina were yeah. so confident about their quality of wine. Yeah. They invited two, two of the most important wine journalists in Spain, three of the sommeliers of the top three star Michelin restaurants wow. in Spain mm -hmm. to come. They then went out and they bought, they bought in bottles of the greatest wines of the world. Of the world? Chateau Petrus, Domaine mm -hmm. Romini Conte. Um, amazing wines and they did, they hosted a blind tasting mm -hmm. of, the, of, of, the, of the, best, the best 15 wines in the world. Some of these wines sell at £2,000 a bottle, and their wines were placed in the top four, the Six Años, Seis Años, the and the Gran Reserva, both in the top four, above Domaine Romani Conte, above Petrus. So these, these ladies Gosh. are making the incredible top wine. Incredible wine. Yeah. You know, from, from the start of 25 years, that is some doing. But uh, no, it's. I know Michelle uh, Obama is a fan, isn't she? Because well, she goes to the local restaurant. Is it in Madrid? Yeah. Well, she arrived in Madrid, went to some amazing restaurant, and the sommelier. She said, "Show me, show me a wine." I'm not. A, she's not a Spanish wine person, yeah. and she tasted the Six Años, and she went, "That is amazing. Give me some more information. Where can I buy that wine in the U.S.?" So. That was pretty good news. That was some, some endorsement. Seal of approval, I guess. A little bit of that. So, no, it's been great, and um, thank you. And I'm, I've enjoyed talking with you, Nikki. You too as well, Chris. Cheers. Thank you.